Can you believe that it's not even in wintertime and it is already dropping to like the mid 25 degrees over here in Pennsylvania? I thought that was wild. It'd be really, really cold, but that means I need to figure out how to heat up this greenhouse. So come with me as I do a little experimentation in good old Jackie ADHD fashion and try to figure out how the heck can I keep this greenhouse at least somewhat heated using no electricity, no batteries, and just some passive thermal mass? Go figure. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a much needed form of mental health therapy, sobriety, and also learning how to navigate this crazy ass world with ADHD using tips and tricks and hacks we can find in our garden, but also healthy living. And I need this greenhouse to survive the entire winter time with a little bit of heat. But yo, can you believe that in Pennsylvania, it's like 25 degrees at night right now? This whole entire week at nighttime is gonna be in the mid 20s. So this is a great opportunity to start experimenting right now before the full blown winter hits. Can you believe it? I gotta find a way to heat this sucker up. So if you got any great ideas, come along with me as we kind of figure out how the heck can I passively heat up this greenhouse even just a little bit. Remind you, I only have a lot of leafy greens. This entire greenhouse is gonna be a ginormous salad bowl. So everything that I'm growing in here is cold hardy. So that's one, that's the advantage that I have right here. It all depends on what you're growing inside of the greenhouse during winter. So try to stick with only leafy greens, only cold hardy, frost hardy greens or any type of veg like that. Now mind you, you can always run a generator or some type of like heating element with an extension cord, but I didn't want to run that risk. I really did not want to run in that whole entire extension cord from the greenhouse all the way inside of my house. I didn't want to do it. What I was thinking about a solar powered heater that I can put inside of here, but frankly, I ain't got no money. So that's not an option, that's out. Maybe in the future, I'll think about that when I have the money for it, but for now, that's not an option. So what are the options I do got for this girl that's broke as a joke? What do I have? And that's thermal mass. And I really, really looked into thermal mass this week and I really learned a lot about it. Now, what is thermal mass? Thermal mass is the ability to absorb hold on to, store heat, and also release that heat. And the best way of you know using thermal mass is through water. And that's what I'm using this time. I've read a few articles on thermal mass and when it comes to the how many gallons you're gonna need per square foot, that kind of varies. But the general is between two and five gallons. One article said two to four gallons per square foot. The other one said five gallons per square foot. Spray painting your containers black will allow those containers to be absorbed by all the heat that the sun is giving off. After you paint those containers black, that black is going to absorb all the heat that's available from the sun. It's gonna store it in the water, and then at nighttime, once it's really, really, really cold outside, it's going to start dissipating all of that excess heat, and it's gonna kinda like even out the temperature inside of here. Even if these black jugs cannot be able to give me the amount of heat that I'm needing, at least it will kind of help balance and stabilize the fluctuations in temperature from the day to the nighttime. And I'm okay with that because of the leafy greens that are cold hardy inside of this greenhouse. So they can take a good beating of the cold, but ideally I would like to keep it maintained at a relatively stable temperature. And that's what I'm looking for. So at least if I can't get it super, super hot in here, can I at least get like a little minimizing of like the fluctuation? I'm happy with that. The problem is, is that this greenhouse is not in the direct sunlight for the entire day. Now, ideally you would want the sun directly beaming on these plastic containers to really absorb the maximum amount of heat possible. Unfortunately, that's not the case for right here in this greenhouse because I only get a lot, a lot of sun in the morning, which is why I'm filming this right now. So you can see that it's bright out here. Okay, outside it is 43.7 degrees. It is 86% humidity. Damn, that is a lot of humidity. It did rain last night, so I'm assuming that's where it comes from. But let's go check the greenhouse. Got my little, you know, my little guard standing watch. Oh, how cute you are. All right. Going in the greenhouse. Going in the greenhouse. What do we have? It is legit 64.5 in here. It's still, it did not move. 84% humidity. So I'm assuming, yo, that is a big jump. But then again, remember, the sun was hitting this greenhouse early in the morning. So I guess we'll find out how it goes throughout the afternoon. But now is the time to go add those jugs of water and see what it will do throughout the day. We're in my greenhouse right now. It is about 1245 in the afternoon, the same day that I put in those jugs. All right, yo, I had to take off my glasses because look how foggy they are. Now I do question this because outside it is bright and sunny. So if we open this up, look how beautiful the sky is. 
the sun is shining. So that means, you know, this greenhouse is warming up. Yo, I'm watering right now, and if you can see by the temperature, hold on a second, let's look at the temperature. I think it's getting warmer. Oh, that got to like 80.7 degrees. That's crazy. Oh, I was just walked past this garbage can, and then, and then I thought to myself, it's black, thermal mass, heat, where's the lid? Yo, I will stick that garbage can right in my greenhouse, and I will see if that will help. Oh my gosh, what a great idea. All right, 32.7, that's not the best, but outside it's like 28 degrees, so I don't know if that's an improvement. I guess it can be. I don't know if it's a lot of improvement. I don't even know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna flip and try it because what else we got, all right? What else do we got? I don't know. 34 degrees outside, but check at the temperature, 66.9. Uh, looky what I found here and Jose says babe you don't like to throw anything out you're a hoarder for this reason this is why I keep stuff because I found a 55 gallon barrel and we're gonna try to shove that inside of the greenhouse I don't know how but we're gonna try it got Jose to put this in the greenhouse and boy let me tell you I rubbed it in that <laughs> look at that it took two years to use this barrel but I found something to use it for I don't have my microphone on because you know I'm moving around all right, so it is 54 degrees in here currently. The temperature went down, but I'm assuming that has to do with the sun outside because the sun went away. It's like mad cloudy out there. So I'm assuming that that's the reason why it dropped down like 10 degrees, but no biggie because it's still like 54, like 54, 55 degrees in here. Still better than it is outside, let me tell you that. I'm freezing my non-existent balls off outside. You're thinking to myself, why is it so freaking cold out here? That's because it's still only 35 degrees at like one o'clock in the afternoon. That's why. I've been standing here for about 10 minutes filling this sucker up. Oh, I think we've gotten there. Oh, we finally did. I just finished filling that up and it's 57 degrees. Now, mind you, it is the, you know, it's still, uh, what do you call it? Cloudy as heck outside. So just by me filling this up, that went up. Now, I don't know if that had to do with that increase but I don't know I left the door open and still hey it's like eight something in the morning this last night's frost was fierce it was like 23 degrees last night and I'm in my greenhouse right now and let me tell you I got some ice in here oh man that that definitely got there come on spinach you're kind of frozen, but you will bounce back. All right, Swiss chart. Oh, you are crunchy. Yeah, it's a uh, man. All right, let's move on. Wow, that is serious frost. Okay, well, this is why I say you have to. Oh, man, my cilantro looks wilty, but that's okay. It's because it's freaking cold. Oh, uh, yeah, that's just frosty. Oh, that's frosty. That's okay, though, because it will bounce back. Frost hardy, man. Obviously, that didn't freeze, but maybe this will do something. All right, let's check out the temperature. Oh, 32.9 in here. Right at the freezing point. Okay. Well, it's got to be better than being outside, though. Okay, so what I'm figuring is that without the sun, these water jugs are not going to work. And you're not going to get the thermal mass you're going to need to heat this greenhouse up. However, you know, when you do got sun, it does work. I'm not going to lie about that one. So I guess it's all dependent on how much sun you get per day. If you think about it, without some sun, you're kind of like screwed. So without the sun, you're really not going to, you know, this is not going to work out. But however, if you do get some good sunlight, then I guess this won't be a problem. Just another beautiful day. Lots of sun, lots of sun. All right, it's a little warmer in here. The ice is still kind of got, this water got a little bit of ice, but not too much. All right, everything doesn't look like it's been, you know, touched by serious frost. Oh, hey, we got 60 degrees in here. Hey now, I'm happy about that. 
Another thing that I'm going to be trying out is Mylar. Now, if you ever heard about Mylar, Mylar sheets is like that very, very reflective. It looks like aluminum foil, but it's not aluminum foil. It looks like aluminum. It's very, very shiny. It looks metallic. Um, you, you can use that in emergencies, like, like the emergency blankets. But you could also use it in gardening because it is very, very reflective. But another, th aside from it being very reflective, it's supposed to maintain and hold on to heat, which is why they use it in emergency situations to kind of like wrap people in. To me, I didn't think that ever made sense just by looking at it. Like this little ass Mylar sheet, how is that going to supposed to heat you up? So I'm thinking if that can try to heat up a human, what are the odds of me lining the entire back of my greenhouse with Mylar? Would that affect anything? Would that help absorb heat? I know that it reflects the light, reflects the heat, but maybe could it help absorb? I don't really know. Place your bets. What do you think is going to work? Do you think the thermal mass with all the containers are going to work? Do you think the Mylar is going to have any kind of effect on it? Is both of them going to have an effect on it? Do you think having a lid for your containers is going to help? Not going to help? It's going to hinder it? And also, what else do you think I can add to this that has nothing to do with battery or electricity? It's 38 degrees outside, but what is it inside? All I know that it's freaking cold out here or inside. Let's see what it is. Oh, 42.9, 43. Okay, well, um, not much. Not much going on. So, what is the conclusion? Yeah, this helps. But again, I figured that I would need a lot more barrels than what I have, you know, to make this all happen. I got that barrel over there. I got this one right over here. I got a bunch of the little ones. I got that big one here. I got that little five gallon over there. Needless to say, this was not enough barrels to make a huge impact, but I guess it's enough even on a cloudy day. Mind you, there's no sun. At least I get something. Am I happy about this? Not exactly. However, it is what it is. What do you think? Would you think this was like a significant difference enough to make, you know, kind of like a salad bowl happen for the entire winter? Let me know down in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some good information out of it. Let me know down in the comments below. How in the world did you heat up your greenhouse? Do you have a greenhouse? And if you do, did you heat it up? Did you use thermal mass? Did you use electricity? Did you use some type of uh, generator? Let me know. I am genuinely curious because maybe I'll get a few ideas off of you guys. Until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. God bless you all. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Peace and love.